Yet even after the Football Association was formed, the rules of the game were flexible. Many people misunderstand the development of the game. They think that in 1863, the Football Association was founded, a set of rules was created, and that was it. That wasn't it. If you asked a player in the 1860s or 1870s, uh, are you a football or a rugby player, they probably would have said, I'm sorry, I don't understand, what are you talking about? Because it was quite common for teams to play association in the first half of the game, to play rugby in the second half of the game. You agreed the rules on a match-by-match -match basis. You could have 10, 11, 12, 14, 16, 20, as many players as the other team agreed. Such confusion was never more pronounced than when teams from England met teams from Scotland. Queen's Park, the Scots' greatest side, had pioneered a game which involved passing the ball between players, a style the English chose to dismiss. The English tended to, it was more, you could see more vestigial traces of rugby, I think, in the way that English players played. Um, the English players, when they played Queen's Park, were very keen that hacking should be kept. Uh, deliberate kicking of the shins. Uh, there is a letter from Lord Kinnaird uh, to Queen's Park, arranging a friendly and saying, let's have hacking, it's such fun. Which depended on what end of the hack you were at, I think. <laughs> 